hi in this series of video tutorials in hive we have come to hive what does hive offer to you now if you have a very large data set if you have a very large data set and you want to analyze the data now the first thing what you would be doing is what you would do is you will you will go here okay you will uh, say suppose this is a very large file okay a large file called f1 now your boss comes in and says okay find out uh, all the people who have spent more than five thousand dollars okay from this file this is a data set now the first thing that will come to your mind okay map reduce but to do but to work with map reduce you need to have some expertise in java or any other api that supports MapReduce, correct? So you need to have some expertise and MapReduce is not easy to program. It is a bit difficult, correct? So that is the first thing that you will do. Now, since it is a huge learning curve to learn MapReduce and then analyze the data, Hive comes to the rescue. So Hive has come to our rescue, okay? Now, what is Hive? Hive is SQL for Hadoop. Okay, so what do we mean by Hive is SQL for Hadoop? Before we go there, let's do something. Uh, not let's do something. I want to give you some trivia about Hive. Okay, how Hive came into existence and stuff like that, right? So let me open a new one. Okay, now Hive. Hive was created at Facebook. On now, Facebook had a large pool of engineers who were well versed with SQL, and they wanted to use this SQL knowledge rather than you know, make all the engineers learn MapReduce. So what they did is they built an engine. They said, "Okay, let's build an engine." that will convert SQL queries into MapReduce code. So that's how Hive came into existence. So Hive basically you write an SQL like query which gets converted into MapReduce code. Okay. So that's what Hive is. Right. Now that is what you can do with Hive. Now if anyone asks you for a definition of Hive, you can say Hive You can safely say Hive is a data warehouse infrastructure built on top of HDFS. Okay, so that is what Hive is in one line, right? So this is what you do. Want to leverage Hadoop stack and technology to do warehouse and analytics? Okay. So this is what we covered. It's a Hadoop based system for querying and analyzing large amounts of structured data. Uh, it uses MapReduce for execution. Uh, it is it uses the underlying HDFS storage. Okay. Right. Now we'll come to this at some point. I don't want to confuse you with everything at this moment, but we'll come back to this. Okay. Now, what's a typical use case? Typical use case is what we I think we already discussed what we discussed here was a typical use case we said we have a large amount of data and let me draw something say let me draw a file so we have a large amount of data large data file say 10 gig file and we want to analyze this data now as I said MapReduce needs expertise and in your 
place of work you have business analysts who do not know MapReduce. Business analysts, some of the business analysts may know SQL. and you have this large amount of unstructured data what do the business analysts usually do they run aggregation summarization functions on tables etc correct then they do data analysis and then they analyze the data based on the above and then they will have some pictorial representations like a bar chart like this or a pie chart like this and stuff like that okay so they'll have this kind of things this is the kind of things they do okay so the typical use case is to place this large amount of unstructured data into some kind of a structure and allow the business analyst to run aggregation summarization functions or queries and then analyze the data so that's a typical use case this is how you would use hive so large amount of structured data we have to somehow give it some kind of a structure which will allow the business analyst to use these tools okay so that's a typical use case okay there you go that's what is explained in that slide all right now when will you not use hive okay for that i'll explain when will you not use hive okay say let's say rather than just giving a statement okay don't use hive in this case and don't use use hive in that case uh, we'll go back to the basics now if you look at it this is say let's say this is the hdfs system inside here you have the name node the data node data node uh, the job tracker the task tracker okay and they communicate this way okay so this is a hdfs system now when you uh, and you have a huge file here say this is file f1 okay now when you have this file f1 here and you write map reduce code map reduce takes a very long time to run so the latency is an issue so you wouldn't use map reduce when you have online transactional processing say you are on a website and if you want some data out of that uh, system very quickly you wouldn't be running map reduce on this large amount of data and expect the user to still be there till the result comes back so latency is an issue and map reduce you can't use it in on oltp online transaction processing so based on this because hive converts everything to map reduce it automatically means that hive is not suited for online transactional processing correct so that is point number 1 hive where latency is very important you cannot use hive second now i said hive is sql for hadoop okay we'll come to this uh, again when i said hsql for hadoop it means it has got tables it has got uh, views etc so, uh, so does it mean that it will allow you some kind of crude kind of an application no so even a crude application is not possible because by the very nature of hdfs what is the nature of hdfs it is write once and read many a times so if i if i write this file once i have to read this many a times for analysis correct i can't be using is for you know finding a particular piece of data in there say a small chunk of data say find this 
even to find write some find i'll have to write a map reduce code which will take a very long time to run because it involves creating map a task reduce a task etc etc and uh, firing up the jvms and things like that so crude kind of application you should not use high because it's impossible okay also when you have a very small data set you will be you will be better off by writing map reduce at that time because the amount of uh, infrastructure involved in creating a, in a setting up hive having an rdbms to store meta information and things like that so all of that wouldn't uh, justify so you rather do uh, map reduce and even map reduce is not the right thing to do you might use some other tools uh, for extraction data because by the very nature again hdfs is for large files default block sizes in hdfs are 64 mb now if you have very small files the name node will be storing a lot of meta information and this will get heated up so again for small data set of for small files this is not very useful okay so by the very nature of hdfs all of these things cannot be done in hive okay i hope you enjoyed it thank you